Welcome back to Micro World Video. We're here at the AAAS meeting in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I'm speaking today with Natalie Prestigecki. Natalie is environmental and public health microbiologist at the University of British Columbia and the Provincial Public Health Institute of Canada, of British Columbia. British Columbia. <laughs> so Natalie is going to give a talk here at the AAAS meeting entitled uh, Friends, Family, and Food. And it's all about norovirus and, and how norovirus is, can influence uh, our lives in such profound mm -hmm. ways. Could you tell us what norovirus is and, and why it's in the news so much lately? Well, it's a single-stranded RNA virus um, that causes gastrointestinal illness, so it can cause vomiting and diarrhea. And the main thing about why norovirus is in the news so often is that it's actually the main cause of acute gastroenteritis um, in all of the world. And it represents probably up to 60% of all illnesses in the United States related to GI. And it also causes about 23 million cases annually. Um, so that's probably why it's in the news so often, and it's very, very contagious. And because of that, you see these outbreaks of large number of people um, becoming ill quickly. So how do we distinguish norovirus from all these other gastrointestinal diseases that, are, that comprise the other 40% of the infections? We have good lab tools. And so um, back in the 90s, when, when we first saw the emergence of norovirus along with the cruise ship industry, um, the tools weren't that great. We used electron microscopy. It was really hard. You had to have a really high viral load to be able to actually uh, diagnose it with norovirus. But with the advent of molecular tests, such as uh, real-time PCR, we can diagnose an outbreak within four hours of receipt of the sample. So that's why, um, that's how we distinguish it from other organisms. So norovirus seems to be in the news so much more lately. It, is it becoming more prevalent or are we just recognizing it more effectively? I think we're recognizing it more effectively. Um, from our perspective at the laboratory, our outbreak numbers are decreasing substantially from the peak in 2003. Um, so in, in terms of the, we do see these epidemics of norovirus as a new strain emerges, you see that there's more, um, more acute illness, you see bigger outbreaks. Um, but that's not actually the case right now. I think that what's happening is that there's more opportunities for people to transmit it to one another. And so we're seeing these bigger um, outbreaks like the ones that we see in the newspapers, at universities, on airplanes. Um, it, it has to do with our behaviors more than the virus's behaviors. So how is it transmitted? What are we doing? Well, it is a gastrointestinal illness and most of these are transmitted from, through the fecal oral route. So it's either um, fecally contaminated surfaces, your hands. Um, it also can be spread in the air through vomit. Um, so clean sanitation and hygiene are the best ways to prevent it. So we should use hand sanitizers? We shouldn't use hand sanitizers actually. The best thing is basic soap and water. Um, we see that there's some evidence, um, it's controversial evidence, but we see some evidence that um, norovirus is not completely susceptible to alcohol-based disinfectants. That's because it lacks a lipid membrane in its envelope. So yeah, I would, I would recommend hand washing over um, alcohol-based sanitizers. The other possibility is that it's actually spread beyond just being spread person to person. It is spread through the food and waterborne routes. And there again, proper food handling and knowing your food source and water source will help you prevent illness. Um, for example, oysters are frequent um, sources of, of norovirus and oysters are really popular. You'll see them at all the menus going around. You'll actually see a little um, warning from our medical health, health officer saying that you, should, that you should avoid eating raw oysters, but people do it anyways. Um, and because oysters bioconcentrate materials in the water, they become a really good source of um, norovirus. And we've had some outbreaks here locally related to consumption of raw oysters. So sometimes we hear about these outbreaks on a cruise ship, and then the cruise ships close down and they sterilize it. What do they do to sterilize the whole cruise ship? Um, well, they remove surfaces that, um, that, that would have been contaminated that they, ha they can't clean naturally. So for example, um, on a recent outbreak on a plane that, um, that was published, they actually had to remove all the upholstery in the area where the, where the contamination event occurred and then steam clean the whole rest of the area where there is carpet. When there isn't carpet, there are a list of recommended um, disinfectants by the US EPA. They've tested the efficacy and there's a list of about 30 to 40 um, disinfectants that are effective. Um, in our experience, Freshly um, created bleach solutions um, at high PPM is the best way to go for it for, um, for disinfecting. So what they're doing is they're disinfecting the entire ship. So since norovirus is such a recurring problem on cruise ships, there are a lot of people who are afraid of taking that cruise in the middle of winter. How do you feel about that? Um, I think that 
you, you can protect yourself with good hygiene practices. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face that often. Um, wash your hands after you touch any surfaces. Um, don't eat high-risk foods on cruise ships. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's fine to go on cruise ships. You just have to be, um, you have to be vigilant. So, so let me ask you one other question about that. And that, that has to do with the responsibility. So there are some people who eat at a restaurant or go on a cruise ship and come down with some gastrointestinal disease and soothe the organization. And, and so the question is, is it, is it the responsibility of the organization? Is this part of, of life, a risk that we all take? Or is it part of our own decision making in terms of what we choose to eat, whether it's raw oysters or, or what have you? That's a great question. Um, I understand that America is a more litigious society. Um, and I think that it's, the responsibility is borne by, by both parties, by the person who put themselves in the risky situation, as well as the, as, as the facility. Um, the facility should have a good um, outbreak management protocol in place. And so I think that the only way that you could actually efficiently sue them is because norovirus, I can catch norovirus from you from talking to you right now. You can catch it from anywhere. It's going to be really hard to prove source attribution. So um, I think it's everyone's responsibility to, to take care of themselves. But um, yeah. So where, where are we with therapeutics and preventives like vaccines? Well, there actually are um, no therapeutics against norovirus. The, um, we recommend support therapy. So um, lots of fluids and um, electrolyte um, replacement. In terms of vaccine development, at the meeting tomorrow, um, we'll hear an update um, from one of the predominant researchers in the United States on where they are with a developing vaccine. It's on, it's en route. I do not even believe they're close to clinical trials. So, yeah. so, wh where do you, where do you see this field going? Do, do you, do you, you mentioned that norovirus cases are decreasing. Uh, is there something else that's supplanting them in, in um, the public health field? Well, first of all, right now norovirus is going down. But what could happen is what we saw in 2003 was the emergence of a, almost a super strain, a strain that was, um, it was this G24 strain that was able to replicate at higher rates than, than other strains. And so it actually, you know, it exploded all over the world. So perhaps a new strain or variant will emerge. Um, we are seeing increasing numbers of sapovirus infections. Um, sapovirus is also part of the Clisiviridae family, so very related to norovirus, and has some of the same problems with being able to disinfect it, high, uh, low infectious dose, high infectivity. So maybe we'll be seeing the um, emergence of, nor of sorry, sapovirus. Something to look forward to. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs>